Hello world. Patricia O'Connor here in one. Leave a Darcy. And today there is so much going on. Uh, a lot to catch up on, I suppose. Our lights have just gone off a few minutes ago because we're past 4.30. I'm starting to leave them on a little later. They're coming off about 4.45 now. Uh, today was a big errand day for me. I started off watering everybody who needed watering. And, um, and then I went out and did, and then I did, went out and did my running around. Uh, a couple of little quick changes here to catch up on. I have uh, done a chop on my bougainvillea. Now, if you're looking at this, yeah, I can see your, how the view you're getting. If you look halfway down the trunk, you see a sprig coming out. Ideally, I would probably like to make that, if that sprig grows out into a branch, uh, I would like to make that a, the uh, top of the tree at some point. I, I don't want it to get too long for that little pot. But I did prune it back just a little. Now. That little piece that I chopped off, uh, took it down some, and I'm gonna clean that cut up a little. I don't know if you can see it, but it's still raised up a little. I could clean that up. Um, but that little top, and a little quick look at the oak next to it, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna stay on track. And that little top, let's see how this works out. But uh, there is my little bougainvillea top um, unto itself that would have made a nice little tiny tree. I'm going to see if I can get it to root. Now there are a couple of strikes against that one I didn't really plan to do that. I just chopped it and then looked at it and went hey quick uh, keep that wet and uh, put it in some stuff. But the other side is uh, on my last video which was our Tuesday drop um, I was talking about uh, how everything is just budding out so nicely and uh, little buds are just coming out everywhere. And then I think somewhere along there, I did mention that uh, we still are in February and uh, winter could still raise could still raise its head at any time, throwing us a curve if we're not really on our game. So, uh, what I didn't realize was, and I, I even got ironic about it, I probably brought all of this on us when I said, um, and you know, we could be due, but on the other hand, it's starting to look less likely. Well, little did I know that uh, within a couple of hours, it would be raining. and. Um, our temperature didn't drop. I mean, it didn't plummet, but it did, yeah, it did drop. Um, we got down to about 38 here, but at the same time, they were calling for freezing in parts of the Bay Area. Our weather reports uh, can really catch you out if you're, not, if you're not really on your game. Like for instance, I don't tend to watch a lot of local news. I, I kind of probably rely on my phone too much. Um, but when I checked my weather report on my phone, it said rain in an hour. I was like, hey, what? Because it was, it looked like this. And uh, I hadn't been watching the local weather. And the phone uh, will give you some weather. It'll tell you what's going to happen this today to some extent as predicted but it doesn't update like they're supposed to necessarily. And it, uh, like in that instance, it goes, yeah, it's gonna rain in an hour. And I had no idea we were, a cold front was about to roll in. So that was, a, uh, that was our Tuesday drop. Within a couple of hours, it had gone from the 50s to the, uh, to the low 40s, high 30s here. Last night was more of the same, 
that have had freezing at the higher elevations and stuff. I'm showing you all the shoots on my trees though. They still look really green and they still look really uh, purple, which I think means for the most part, everything is okay. New shoots on these guys, just like, uh, kind of like the oaks and stuff, they come out at this at bright colors and um, the uh, cypress trees here, the uh, shoots come out really purple or maroon looking, which is also what something tends to look like uh, when it gets cold, not necessarily frostbite, but when it gets cold. Uh, I used to notice that on TV, I would see people had uh, succulents or stuff in their yard in California that looked like they were doing really well. They would grow huge, but they looked a slightly different color than the stuff we had growing up where I lived. And come to find out, it was in a fantastic climate for growing those things. That's why they always look so much bigger. But the difference in color was because uh, California mornings are cold. And every day it warms up to some absolutely terrific temperature. But before sunrise, the um, temperature can sock stuff. And so a lot of our the succulents that grow around here have kind of a purplish red hue to them. Where the same thing growing in southeast Texas would just look very, very green uh, and typically not as big. Unless it was maybe in the panhandle or something. So, yeah. Um, today is kind of a, it's kind of hard to act like nothing's going on today because, uh, it's, I'm absolutely heart sick to hear about what's going on in the world, uh, with Russia invading the neighboring, the neighboring countries. I just think, uh, all of that is as awful as it is unnecessary no matter whom is doing it. And um, my heart goes out to all of those, to all of those people um, who are trying to go through all of these atrocities right now. And um, yeah. So tonight, to get back on track, tonight is going to be night three of our cold weather. And what I was told originally was to expect uh, some freezing, some freezing temps as in like two nights ago. And um, I did the proper precautions, which is I did some more research and found out that that is true in some parts of the bay, but not our part here next to the water. And that turned out to be the case when uh, some of the higher elevations were having some temperatures that were freezing we were still here in oakland hanging out at about 37 to 39 degrees it didn't hurt our blooms it didn't hurt our wisterias our oaks could actually care care less uh, probably the same with our pines. Now, had we got some real freezing temperatures like 32, uh, you can go and see a lot of times, you'll see people's gardens in Japan where their Japanese black pines will be just absolutely covered in snow. Uh, I don't think that's necessarily a sign that you can just, uh, these guys would not have been uh, used to that. And I don't know that an out of the blue huge cold spell when it was uh, 70 a few days before might not catch them out. So if we were going to have some really, really super cold temperatures, I would take my pines down from the rail and bring them down to the deck. Now this guy, uh, I don't have to worry uh, about them. I don't think I have to worry about them freezing they're not on the rail going to get their uh, pot exposed to frozen air uh, at, you know, like a five mile an hour breeze of 30 degree air would, you know, eventually freeze that pot over. Uh, I don't think that's an issue. Uh, even there, if it gets ventilation 
If it was, I could absolutely fix that. I could uh, clip a blanket to this side of the pot on the lip, just, you know, a ferny, a ferny pad or something, just to stop the current of air from freezing that over. And if I were uh, worried about, if I were worried about super cold temps for these guys, uh, you may recall, some of you may recall last year, I staked up my leaders because I didn't want them getting kind of flopsy. So I had bamboo stakes on this one and uh, two on the center one and one on the third one. So if I were really worried about if we were going to um, have to snap to for a really hard freeze, I would probably bring down my oak, both of them, and set them on the deck. I probably uh, would be thankful that I finally got a freeze day for my ponderosa so that it could reset. I would bring my uh, wisteria and my trident maple also down on the deck. Same with those wisterias. Those guys are already probably as low as they need to go. They don't probably need to go in the concrete floor from there. Where they are now would probably be good. Uh, and as far as that, what I was getting to here is I would put up steaks, bamboo steaks, like tomato steaks. That would, that would you know, be up. I think they were about this high when I had them up last time. I would stake them down into the base of the pot and put up about three steaks. And then I would unfold a uh, dust cover, which is a super, super thin sheet of poly. Um, it's something that you might use to keep dust from getting on furniture. They also at hardware stores tend to keep them with the, uh, with the drop cloths that you would put down before you paint a floor or something. Whereas a drop cloth is canvas. This would be a, this would be a plastic bag that has a plastic square inside of it that looked like it maybe six by six inches or eight by eight inches or 12 by 12 inches but in reality unfolds about 20 times to make a big super thin sheet of poly so with that i could stop the wind from possibly burning new shoots and by putting them uh up on bamboo uh stakes like if i set up three stakes in that in that pot for instance I could drape that, I could drape that thin sheet of plastic. Uh, it would be also the same thing you would use for a dining room table or furniture or something like that if you were painting your living room. Instead of throwing, trying to throw a big canvas uh, drop cloth over your lamp and over your furniture and all that, you would just unfurl one of these little sheets of poly. And when you were through with it, you would wad that up and toss it. Whereas the drop cloth, you would fold that up and put it away even all, you know, anyway more about that but that would be my idea there i would probably at this stage in the game try to protect all of those wonderful little new shoots it wouldn't um be the end of the world if they all burned off or if any of them burn off because it's still early but um we've got a good start and in about three more days it will be warm uh and we will be knocking on uh, we'll be knocking on march so that's typically about the time you can check your watch and say, yes, yeah, spring, um, I think winter's about ready to uh, wrap this up. However, I do happen to have a little bit of insight as a one-time former in this area. When I was learning uh, how to grow things here in the Bay Area, the one thing that I was taught was not to put uh, seedlings out um, any place like overnight you know like if you were growing something in your greenhouse or had you been growing something indoors waiting to bring them out in the spring so that they would have a good jump on everything that you wouldn't do that before the 20th of april yep the dreaded 420 and uh the one time i thought they were just being silly uh i got uh i lost a, a whole raised bed full of uh full of clones um and i missed it by about four days uh 
because uh, I went a week early than that. So that is our little time that um, the wisers before me told me was proper for bringing out things that are not cold weather hardy. I think most of the trees I have here are cold weather hardy. And as for that, as far as that goes, even though uh, the Bay Area where I am close to San Francisco, the whole area is in a freeze advisory until tomorrow morning with the exception with the exception of one place in that San Francisco in San Francisco they're expected not to fall below 40 but every place else uh, is under a freeze warning and with freeze warnings just like actually freeze freezing temperature is actually happening within 20 miles from here we still next to the water here uh, probably will not drop below the high 30s so uh, my plan of action is basically to uh, check my phone for the actual ambient temperatures before I uh, call it a night tonight and um, if it says what I expect it to say uh, set my alarm and go to bed and not worry about it so but had it been cold, that is what uh, I would have done here on my balcony. Also, I've been watching a little thing about uh, wind currents and how they design uh, architecture to have uh, air conditioning in the Middle East, like how they've been doing it for hundreds of years, how they have these like little wind buildings that, um, that catch the wind catchers and how they carry a nice draft throughout a house. To, cool it down in the summer and in the winter they do just the opposite uh, so I was watching a little thing about that and what I learned about that is how they design them has something to do with sometimes the wind will hit a wall and bounce off and sometimes it'll hit a wall and go in and that's some of what I was experiencing here with the uh, the other day when the wind was rolling in see I didn't know that was the cold front and I was talking about, yeah, I don't know, it's probably going to get any tall weather. But anyway, I was noticing that right there where the ponderosa pine is, it's not hanging farther out. Maybe, maybe six inches past the oak tree next to it. And the leaves were just barely moving uh, on, the, uh, on the oak tree. Whereas the Ponderosa was rocking a little bit, and while that was rocking a little bit, the pine tree, the large pine tree that uh, belongs to the apartment that, that I'm honing in on right there, was pretty well, that top was pretty well swinging in the breeze. And you could definitely hear the hiss of uh, all of those, all the wind going through all of those needles. So the way this building, the way my balcony is lined up, um, I could just see the blooms on the uh, on the Japanese wisteria just rustling a little bit. Not enough to not enough to actually disturb a petal. Those new shoots are but I, uh, about like what you see right there. And when that was doing that much movement, that tree was swinging, and this was barely moving. And that, you could maybe see three leaves move. So I think that means that um, from most of the directions, wind will hit the wall that, uh, our facing wall, and just kind of run down it and not uh, penetrate deep. I haven't noticed an excess of water on my lights when it rains, They're, they do get wet, but I haven't noticed an excess of water on them. So I, I think that's just kind of luck by design there, as far as that goes. All of these shoots here seem to be fine. I won't know for a few days yet whether uh, 35, 37, 39, whatever it actually got down to here will affect us. But I do see more of those buds than... Um, than I saw yesterday. 
So we're continuing to grow things. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean. I have also seen instances where little buds and shoots will can come out. Um, can come out like this, like, like you're seeing this guy here. And then in a couple of weeks from now, when that little when that little shoot comes all the way out, maybe we'll see where the part that's exposed now, before the rest of it extends out and unfolds and does all of its wonders, uh, we might see that that's a different color than the rest of it because of being exposed to that really cold temperature. My hunch is that I think these guys might be okay. Not sure. Some of this does look a little brown. We'll just have to wait and see. I don't think there's going to be any loss. I mean, any uh, lack of shoots following up behind it if we drop any numbers here. But my guess is that um, my guess is that a lot of that stuff will. Um, We'll, we'll have escaped the cold temperatures just fine. And tonight being the final night of that, and they're not really calling for the temperatures here in Alameda, again, to go much below 40. Uh, although it, microclimates are everywhere here. We have a, a lot of different elevations and a very short amount of distance. And it just, you know, you can go on a walk around here in an hour and find yourself in and out of jackets, uh, unlike any other place, personally, unlike any other place I've ever lived in. You you definitely dress in layers and um, be ready to go in and out of all that stuff if you expect to be comfortable. So, but comfortable we are. And it's a nice day. Uh, by, the, by this weekend, I think we should be looking uh, quite a bit warmer every day. Uh, starts is going to be a couple of days warmer, but for the last couple of nights we had been dipping down to the high 30s here in Alameda, lower 30s in other places. Um, but that's not really that's not really too much. You know, for the other hand, as well as the oaks would have taken it, and as well as the other trees would have taken it, I kind of was like liking the idea that I was finally going to get to uh, book a 30 degree day for my um, for my ponderosas. I had stated earlier that ponderosas are going to want uh, 48 hours of 32 degree temperatures a year. Uh, if you don't get that one year, you can get it the next year and okay, fine, that's fine. But if you go three or four years without giving uh, this tree a chance to reset, uh, it will fail. And that's what I was told they expect with ponderosa pines, big and small. You see, if you want to grow one of these in Florida, you'll have a good first year. You'll think everything's great the second and third year. And then all of a sudden, it'll start dropping limbs and it'll start dropping branches. And it'll start having dieback, and the first thing comes along, kills it. So that's what happens if they don't get the uh, equivalent of two days below 32 degrees. Probably I've heard it said that this is one of the most freeze hardy trees in America. In America. Uh, and they're also really hot tolerant too. I mean, they can, these guys can just take it all. They are very, very slow moving in their metabolism. And in some of the uh, forestry programs, I've not only been watching bonsai programs about the ponderosa uh, scopulorum, but I've also been watching some of the, you know, some of the, uh, public television stuff where you see some guy in a um, national forestry hat standing there next to a tree uh, with his whole head moving as he tries to read what he wrote on a teleprompter. And uh, I have already found some 
conf some conflicting information a little bit when it comes to the uh, when it comes to this one and um, another species that's very very closely related to it. Like some people will will be bragging about the different traits of uh, of this pine, and on the next video they will uh, list that trait as the way that you can tell a Jeffrey pine from a ponderosa. So I kind of have to do a little bit more to try to weed out what's what. But um, a lot of the information on these trees are pretty good. Um, they're one of our tallest trees in the Americas, and they grow, they grow to be quite, quite old. They tend to lose uh, they tend to um, rot out their uh, cores. So anything over 600 years, probably not gonna have um, a really good chance of counting the ring to see how, to see how old it was. But uh, they think they live well over a thousand years in, in some instances. They are, here's what I learned this, here's what I learned this week. These are extremely slow growing trees what would look like a uh, a uh, seedling that had just sprouted you know this year could actually if it were you know a black pine or you know a scots pine or anything else you look at some little toothpick coming up out of the ground with three needles facing the sky and you think oh that's this year's little seedling that could be a four-year-old ponderosa that's how slow they grow so uh, I don't know if they do that. I'm, I'm not sure if that's just how they do in the wild and, and um, they pick it up under greenhouse, but I don't think so. I think well, I saw one that was like that, that was definitely started from seed and it was several years old and the person was a good grower. So I'm going, I was really amazed at, uh, I mean, I don't know why I was, but to see that, old, I know on this end, my ponderosa seems to move slowly to see that on the uh, other end, on the tiny side of that, was still somewhat surprising. Uh, but yeah, so even though I uh, tempted fate by saying uh, we weren't gonna get any cold, even as the temperature was probably 30 minutes away from plummeting, uh, it still didn't really get, it still didn't really get cold enough, I think, to hurt any of our, uh, any of our buds. And uh, honestly, if it did, we'll make more. But uh, my guess is we're probably, we're probably okay. I think I was, uh, I was actually thinking uh, yesterday that I would uh, get the supplies ready and make this video about how to make sure I didn't uh, burn the buds off of my um, cypress trees while at the same time uh, providing uh, a shield against wind and uh, freezing wind that uh, we like for instance if you put a sheet or a blanket or anything over that you're just gonna knock all this stuff off so you know a lot of good it would do to uh, try to protect all those buds from freezing temperatures only to knock it off with um, with a blanket that was sort of the idea with the dust cover because it's super light and then trying to use that uh, in coordination with the uh, bamboo stakes meant that it uh, wouldn't have even necessarily touched the trees. It just would have provided a windbreak for them to keep, the, uh, to keep that cold breeze from just penetrating everything. Uh, and there would have been a couple of different ways of doing it. I could put a stake here at this end a stake here to represent the middle and a stake here and then maybe put tape around the ends of the stake so that they don't uh, bust through the uh, very thin thin plastic sheeting and no the idea wasn't to get super thin sheeting because it's cheaper the idea is is because that would be less evasive and would be less likely to tear off anything uh, but let's say we had a little bit of a wind situation and whether or not it was light or not light, it would be whipping around and pushing on stuff. Well, then the idea would have been to put a stake here, put a stake there, and put a stake there, and then put our sheet up this way, 
pull it tight and tape and run tape all the way around it so that we would be making in effect a windbreak and not a cover so um we weren't going to be looking at high wind either way but had we been i would have waited to build that uh until the last minute so that i could make sure and uh, give the weather report a chance to revise and tell me that there was was or wasn't going to be gusts along with this possible cold weather so uh barring the information that i got is good and it is from more than one source and people are able to measure the temperature of the, the wind that's coming from out of the ocean so i don't think we're going to be thrown any huge surprises um there's not really a lot i need to do except uh enjoy this little last few moments of my days off we're going to uh have ourselves some my favorite soup tomato bisque and uh i will have some espresso with chocolate and that's kind of my uh that's kind of like my um dinner and dessert uh what i what frida gets i call it kibble but it's really two of her favorite dog food dog foods uh mixed in a proportion that that uh makes her pretty happy so all of our trees are looking good i'm still not seeing anything here in the uh coastal redwood cones uh our little oak is doing well our little uh bougainvillea is doing well uh this will be like the fifth time that i've mentioned my um using my dipsticks to check uh, i think you can see that's a wet dipstick I haven't watered that in a couple of days, but it did sprinkle on this tree uh, day before yesterday. See, that's just it. Before, I would have to go, okay, well, I haven't watered in a couple of days, but uh, a big fall, fog rolled through here. Does that? And right now, the watering is based on on something it's not based on uh me trying to balance does heavy fog amount to water does the top being wet amount to water how dry is it down in the middle after the fog rolls in and makes everything all wet and dewy you know uh did it rain enough under the balcony to constitute a water if the edge of the pot is wet does that mean that the you know all of this stuff uh that by the time you figured all of that out i don't you know i don't want to guess and i really i really like the idea that what i do now is based on something more than uh an er only so slightly educated guess i mean probably educated just enough to be dangerous kind of a guess uh the uh, chinese wisteria is still budding out it looks like it uh had, cares not about the little supposed cold spell and as does the trident maple it's out here living on the edge so to speak and uh, it has not slowed down i mean it, it's bringing up the rear but uh it's just now starting to really bud out and it doesn't seem to care that we had a that we're in the middle of a cold snap it's continuing with its uh it's continuing with its with its progress the oaks are continuing with their progress this uh wasn't anything that really concerned them uh, they didn't really change their pace right now we're at a position where it's transitioning limbs I mean leaves it's starting to come out with all of these new shoots as i've said before but the um the second flush of leaves that it made even the end of the year are starting it's starting to put less and less energy into them and they're starting to look a little spent so 
I would expect with all of this new growth to see a new flush of leaves everywhere too. And uh, that'll be nice to see when all of that stuff comes out. In, in a couple of weeks, I'll probably add some wire to some of these. I'm going to try to mind my P's and Q's and wire stuff, but not clip it back as much, unless it's on the main trunk. I don't want unwanted branches, uh, pepper marking, that's what I'm calling it, my main trunk. But cool, what a trunk, huh? Is that guy got some moose? I think so, I think that guy's really got some cool moose. So yeah, that's us. This is our uh, Thursday drop. And uh, tonight it's going to be all over the bay. It's going to be, except for San Francisco, it's going to be super cold for us, not really anywhere else. I'll probably snicker. Yeah, like we're going to look this. But um, yeah, I get that. I've actually lived in places where it got cold. Um, this isn't one of them. But it has a reverse effect. A couple of years here, and then all of a sudden it's 70 degrees and you're freezing your butt off. But uh, it does get quite breezy here. So that can just take the heat right off of you quickly. But uh, this is uh, this is us. This is our day. Uh, it's been a pretty good day. We went out and got all the supplies we needed. Our work schedule is just what we wanted it to be. Uh, our dog schedule has gotten to be what we wanted it to be. I don't know where we stand with the club. We have we'll have a meeting here in a week or two. I guess two weeks. And uh, I don't know if that one will be online or in person, but uh, I'll be ready to start seeing people again when we can start doing that. And uh, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I, uh, I hope that you are safe wherever you are. And uh, uh, yeah, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, I heard some more news about our uh, about one of our cohorts uh, in the bonsai zone. Apparently, uh, what I hear, uh, Nigel may have been hacked. I have never heard of a uh, of a YouTube site being hacked for today. Nigel, our thoughts, uh, our thoughts are with you, my friend. I uh, hope you and your family are uh, are. Uh, doing well and feeling better and getting the rest you need and everything else will straighten itself out. We all love you and yours and uh, yeah. I will see you guys on our uh, Super Cypress Saturday drop. Well, enough. I'm not really, spit I have no idea what we're doing Saturday. Uh, It'll be the Super Cypress Saturday drop because I have just proclaimed it to be so, but, uh, yeah. Thank you so much for watching, and, uh, I will see you guys this weekend.